Hello, my name is Eric Amin. Welcome to Fine Mathematics. And this is the conclusion to the environment section of our executive functions. And I'm just going to reiterate everything I've already said in the last one. Um, just to kind of summarize everything at the very end, this is just the first tier, or I should say the first section of a total of six of the whole executive function, the infrastructure for student success. Um, so let me, let's just go through it. First thing, when you're building your environment, take the time to build from the bottom up. Take everything out of the room, clean it, paint it, whatever you want to do, so that way you're starting from the very bottom, nice and clean. As you're putting this together, remember, function first, aesthetic second. You want to make sure you're going to get the things done properly and optimally than just looking good. Because if it looks good and doesn't work well, then it, it's not going to function for you. You're going to have to have another space to work. The next thing is, if you're having a dual intent in your room, make sure both intents are balanced. One is not more than the other. You want to make sure if it's a bedroom that you still feel comfortable enough to relax and sleep and then just get a good night's rest, because that's very important, as well as the same thing on the work side. So just kind of keep this in mind when you're engineering your room. And once again, lighting strips, um, LED lights can really help with this stuff. And honestly, too, a little side note in today's world, if you happen to have an AI device that governs your house, you can easily set these things up with either Wi-Fi bulbs or um, outlet Wi-Fi's. And you can easily just say, you know, Google, Alexa, whatever happens to be used, switch between, you know, you give a nice command, go to bedroom mode or go to work mode. And it can immediately change the, the vibe in a, in a sh few short words. I do it in my house here and it's actually very cool and it's, you know, very, very modern, if you will. Um, the last thing, not the last thing, one of the things also, just to kind of reiterate this theme again, whoever the room is for, whoever's going to be utilizing the room, and, and once again, this is guidelines. I'm assuming in generally a high school student-ish plus or minus a few years into college, maybe not, or maybe a college student, or maybe a parent working with their young child if they happen to have a young child. They need to participate in the process on some level. They can't just hang back pointing out orders. They'll be disconnected to it. It's a different, complete vibe. Someone who goes in there, takes everything out, even the, the grunt work, carrying everything, sorting everything, throwing things away, painting it, cleaning it. When you go through that whole process, and you finally end up at the end result and the room was put together, it's got its functionality, the pathways are clear, new paint, um, the thematic ideas are being represented through the decoration and the lights are on and it switches between, thing, uh, between modes, that person is definitely connected to it. They're gonna wanna go to that room. They're gonna wanna sit at the desk and get work done. They're gonna wanna go to bed, you know. Um, these are all from my personal experience as well as personal experience working with students because I have gone to students' rooms and we've done this very process. This is kind of how I built this whole thing up as well as just learning on my own from other people um, online and things like that too. Now the last part that kind of goes with this conclusion and this once again will be reiter reiterated in other areas is reflection. What I recommend you do is once you get your room complete, let it sit I would say at least two weeks to a month. I would say, honestly, let it a month. Don't make any changes. Just utilize it the way it is. Do your best, kind of get used to it. It's gonna take some time to get used to the things, even if you like it a lot. And after some time, reflect upon it. Is there a way to do it better? Can I, should I rearrange the desk? Should I maybe do my supplies differently to make it easier for myself? Remember, function first. Should I move things around so I get more light because there are some unforeseen things you couldn't be aware of until you actually get everything in there. I've done this myself too. Um, don't be afraid to do this stuff, but don't just react too quickly like after a few days or a week, unless it's something blatantly wrong you just happen to you know, not see at first. Reflection is a key. And I will be talking about this much more too. Um, and one of the best ways to do this is the journaling. I'm not gonna go into this too much, but this is, happens to be one of the major nerve centers of kind of many, many things. Um, that's a whole, whole nother video in itself. But if you happen to journal or something like that, or talk to mom or dad or talk to a friend, 
talk about the pros and cons, and I would say write it down. The process of writing it down in some form gets it more active in your brain. It gets you thinking, it gets the visualization in your brain, and really starts to hone in what the errors are or what you could do differently in the future. And then when you see, <clears throat> when you come up with some ideas that can make things better, go ahead and adjust them. Then let that run for a while. And the more times you do this, you'll find that there'll be more time in between them, and then your room is kind of coming closer and closer to whatever this optimal vibe that you're really going for. And lastly, too, remember maintenance. Keep the room clean. When the room is dusted and it's clean, it has a nice sharp look to it. You're proud of it, at least most people are. And I found from personal experience, even people I've known who maybe aren't necessarily the cleanest people, um, and they're okay being things dirty and stuff like that, nobody has ever really complained for a room being clean. They may complain doing it, but nobody complains it being too clean. And trust me, when you're trying to be efficient and squeeze out work at the highest quality, the fastest way so you can go about other things in your life or just enjoy the process of learning, a nice, clean, calm, relaxed environment is always the best environment. One that's not cluttered, it's not traffic, it's one where you can actually get your work done and enjoy being on. That's really what this whole um, section on environment was about, was to engineer the environment to optimal for student success in school. But once again, you can apply all these techniques, even if you happen to not be in school, for work, for whatever it is you want to do in life. These are kind of general rules. I'm just focusing on school because I have found in my decades of teaching, these things really get in the way. And I'm not talking about in 20, 30%, I'm talking anywhere from 50 to 75%, they get in the way, if not even more at times. And they usually get in the way at crucial times. An essay's due, a computer dies, an essay needs to get typed, there's no paper, there's no printer paper, you, you kind of get the idea. When these things become um, second nature and routine and maintenance, they completely eliminate. And all of a sudden the work gets much easier, things get done better, and everybody's happy. Thank you once again for watching Fine Mathematics, and our first section has come to a conclusion on environment, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or anything like that, please just leave them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. And remember, while you're doing all this stuff, enjoy the process. Thanks again. Have a nice day.